Hello, today we're talking about appraising, updating, and engaging your contacts. What does this mean? At this point, you have successfully uploaded all of your contacts into Engage. The next step is to appraise each contact. In other words, to determine their value. Can this contact generate business for you? Can they purchase a home, sell a home, refer business to you? Or can they be a source of information which can support your business? Or the other answer is, should they just be deleted from your database? Once we've determined that, then we will move on and we will update the contact. Is their data complete? Phone numbers, email addresses, physical addresses, social media links, and so forth. Can you add notes to the contact? Is there something that is relevant and important that you need to remember? Finally, we will engage the contact. How can we stay in contact with the contact? Neighborhood news, just listed, just sold e-cards, a holiday campaign, or a newsletter. So, let's get started. First, we're going to go to H Suite. From H Suite, we're going to go up here on our top toolbar and we're going to click on Contact Management. This will open up Engage. Once it is opened, we are then going to click on People, My People. This is a list of people in my Engage. I have it sorted by recently added and from the most recent to the oldest. So we're just going to pick on a couple of these people and work through them. Let's pick on Peter. Now, there's a checkbox right here. I don't really want you to check that. We'll get into that function at a later time. Right now, just click on the name of the contact. This will open the contact. <clears throat> and remember, we're in the phase where we're going to determine the value of this contact. Peter McPoodle. We have two choices, and they're both right here. We have a green button with a dollar sign, and we have this little gray box with a house with a slash through it. Client, non-client. Let's see what our options are here. Click on the gray button, and this is a non-client option. We can mark them as personal, someone that you just want to stay in touch with, but you don't think you're going to get any business from them. We can make them a collaborator. For instance, a fellow realtor, a lender, tradesperson, something like that. Or if you feel that you really don't know who Peter is or whatever, you can remove them from Engage. You can always add them later. I'm going to click this little arrow up here to go back. So we feel that Peter could be valuable to us could add business. We click the green button and now we have three choices. If Peter has indicated that he's going to possibly be selling soon or perhaps buying soon, we can make him a buyer or seller prospect. If that's not the case, we can click this orange button and create a marketing plan. When you click that orange button, you then have four choices. Now, if you're new to the real estate business and you don't have any previous business, these three choices will not mean anything to you. You'll just click the purple button. If you are bringing business with you, since you've joined the Hanna family, then some of these may be relevant. But we're going to click the purple button for this example. This green button shows up and it says create the plan. Relax. The plan's already been created. All you have to do is click on the green button. You now have placed Peter in your marketing plan. 
This is your sales flow across the top, and we'll explain more about that in another session. And you'll notice that there are tasks here. The next step for Peter, now that you have appraised him, is to move on to updating the data. To do that, we're going to start right here at the profile. Click Profile, and you'll see there's no data here at all. Click the Edit button, and we are now able to add a phone number, and we can add an email address. And we can scroll on down here and add a home address or a work address. Continuing on down, instant messaging, if you feel it's relevant. Relationships, you can add a spouse's name, a child's name, a referral, and so forth. Dates, you can add the individual's birthday, their anniversary, their house anniversary, or you can create a custom date field. For instance, if you're in an organization and you've uploaded a list of folks for that organization, and you have an entry date into that organization. Something along those lines. Something that will mean something to you. And personal information if you feel it's relevant. Down here are the social media links. This would be the link to their Facebook page. You open up their page on Facebook and up here in the address bar you copy the address and you paste it here. Same for Twitter, LinkedIn, and so forth. And as we discussed in the appraisal process, if as you've gone through this, you feel a change is necessary, then you can make them a collaborator or personal or a past buyer or past seller, even down here. When you're done adding this data, click the word done up here on the screen. Wait for it. One more step in the update process, notes. When you click Notes, your notes will appear. You notice in the interest of time, I've already added a note. Met at PetSmart, Peter's thinking of selling and purchasing a larger home. I'll send him a HANA presentation and set him up in RealScout. Please date your notes. They do not create, generate a date on their own. And a year from now, when you review these notes, the date could become very, very relevant. And again, when you click the Edit button and you add your information, then just click Done. So, Peter has been updated. The next step will be to get into the engaging process. There are a couple of things within the engaging process that we can do. There are two subscriptions, there are holiday campaign e-cards, and there's the trending at home newsletter. We're going to start with the subscriptions. That's this button right here. When we click add subscriptions you have two choices it's not an either or you can do both so you can add neighborhood news and you can add listing and sales announcements we'll get to this later to add the neighborhood news you click the blue button if you click go right here it's by the zip code which may be fine, 
maybe not. If the neighborhood that this contact lives in is kind of a custom neighborhood, then you can click on the Go button for custom. Let's go over here first. When we click Go, this is the message that they will receive. All you need to do is click Done and it's going to focus on this zip code that we added for that contact. If we use the custom version and we click go, looks a little different. It's generating a map and here's a map of the zip code. Well, we may find that we need to change this area. So we can just click on the draw and the quick draw and perhaps they live in this little neighborhood right here which is a little more secluded. Then you hit next and next again and one more time. And if you hit send, then he's all set. There's an example of what Peter would receive. It all relates back to you. They can email you, contact you, and so forth. We're going to hit cancel for this. Go back to subscriptions. And the other subscription is the just listed, just sold. That's the green button. Click the green button and click done. And you're, that's it. All set up. Please understand for the just listed and just sold e-cards to go out, you have to be tracking the transaction within Engage. And we'll get into more of that in another session. Campaigns. Button is right up here on your toolbar. Click on Campaigns. Your first stop is going to be this blue button up here to add from the library. What shows up is a list of the available campaigns and there are a number of them in here. For this purpose we are just concentrating on holiday cards. Holiday e-cards, we go over here to the right and we click on preview. I really suggest that you look through all of the different types of e-cards and see what fits your business plan. To look at the most recent ones you need to click the little arrow to the left that takes you to the upcoming year this is holiday 2023 you can scroll down every one of these e-cards is mail merged so it's going to have the contacts first name in it click the left button again it takes you to the next card Thanksgiving, Veterans Day, and so forth. So, if you like this particular campaign, you're going to click Add to Campaigns right down here. This window will appear and you'll see that what we just added is right here. Now this campaign is not set up, not by a long shot. Your next step in setting up this campaign is going to be to click on the name of the campaign. We're going to use this one as an example. This is the holiday greetings, the pet version. So. Here is the campaign schedule. You can adjust the schedule by clicking on this button. For instance, 
we have a Monday holiday for Memorial Day. As it stands, this e-card will go out on Memorial Day. If I click Edit the Schedule, this message will appear. By changing the schedule, this campaign will not auto-renew at the end of the year. And that's fine with me. So now the dates show up, little calendars. You also at this point have an opportunity to remove cards if you don't think that you want to send them to your clients. Holiday Memorial Day. I click on the calendar and I want to move this to the Friday before the holiday. That way folks are still at work when the e-card arrives. When I'm done, I click Done. Okay, but we're still not done with this because we have no idea who we're going to send it to. So let's click on the name of it, the campaign again, and we're going to go up here to the top where it says Recipients, and we're going to edit the recipients. We can add recipients, and when this window shows up, the individual contacts in your database will be here and you can merely check on the box and you'll notice the add button turns on becomes hot that could be a long process or you can use groups so this is the holiday greetings pet version so as i was going through all of my contacts i realized I had a fair number of pet people. So I created a pet people group. And it's pet people right here. And it already has one person in it and I've already chosen it. So we can add additional people if we choose to. Once you've added people, you're going to click Save and then Done. Then you can choose Run Campaign. At this point, the process is going to pause slightly. It's setting things up. And it'll let you know when it's complete and your campaign will be ready to run. Setting up the newsletter happens in the same process. That campaign is now running and it's under my running tab. If I click on the running tab, it'll show you this data will fill in, allowing you to keep track of your opens, your clicks, and so forth. I have a 25% open rate on my trending at home newsletter, which is actually pretty good. So if you have any questions, Check in with your manager or your education department. Thanks.